All right, so today we are going to learn about domain, range, and interval notation for our family of graphs. So if you want to take a minute and go over part one and write down uh, the graphs linear, exponential, quadratic, absolute value, and square root as a little warm-up. So go ahead and do that now. The first one, we should have gotten exponential. Second one would be linear. Third one, square root. Remember that square root goes to the right. Then we have quadratic. And then absolute value. And before we continue, let's take this one step further and write down uh, the parent functions. So exponential is y equals a to the x. Okay. Linear is y equals x. Square root is y equals the square root of x. Quadratic is y equals x squared. And absolute value is y equals the absolute value of x. Okay. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is domain and range of our functions. Okay. Remember that domain is what goes into the function. Range is what you get back out. So, okay. And it, what, it goes into... So all you have to do is list the x values for domain and the y values for range. Okay. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. These examples are just written differently. So go ahead and take a moment and list the domain and range for both examples 7 and 8 on your own. All right, go ahead and share your answer with your partner, and as you are doing that, I will write the answers up here. All right, go ahead and compare your answers with the answers that are on the board. Okay, and then let's move on. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is interval notation. So typically, you guys are used to seeing inequalities the way that it's listed right now. Okay. But we have to write our answers in interval notation. Okay. First of all, let's go over what interval notation is. So if you see like a square bracket like this, that's considered a closed bracket. Okay. That means you include the point. 
So that would be for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. An open bracket would be less than or greater than. So if we had a number line, and always mark zero, you don't have to do individual tally marks, but always mark zero, and we have 10, okay? Do we include the point or do we not include the point? Well, since it's greater than, that's going to be an open bracket, okay? And it's going towards the positive direction. And so we will draw the open bracket at 10, and then we go to infinity. Okay. So how we would write that in interval notation is we would say 10 to positive infinity. Okay. Couple notes here. First of all, positive infinity can only ever be in the right side of the bracket. Okay, so once again, here's an active note for you. Positive infinity can only be on the right side of the bracket, or the interval. Okay, second of all, infinity will always have an open bracket with it. Okay. The negative infinity will always be on the left side of the interval. So if I wanted to write the whole number line, we would say negative infinity to infinity. So negative infinity is only on the left, positive infinity is only on the right, and you always have an open bracket with infinity symbols. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So always mark zero, and then we have five. Okay. So first of all, this is a less than or equal to, which means we're going to have a closed bracket, and it's less than or equal to. So give me a number less than or equal to five. It's three? Great. Okay. Which way is three with respect to five? Hopefully you answered to the left. So we're going to have a closed bracket. We're going to the left. Okay. Now the way you guys write interval notation, it always has to go left to right. So we're coming up from negative infinity, and we're stopping at 5 with a closed bracket. Okay. So there's another active note for you that you always go from left to right when you write an in interval notation. Okay. All right, so let's look at this third example. Let's first draw a number line. Mark zero, negative two, and seven. So at negative 2, we are not including the point, so it's going to be an open bracket. At 7, we are including the point, so it's going to be a closed bracket. Okay. Notice that x is greater than negative 2, but less than or equal to 7. So it's going to be the in-between space that we just marked. So in interval notation, we would write that as negative 2, to 7, close bracket. Okay. All right, go ahead and try example 12 on your own. Share with your partner. Okay. And we should have gone a closed bracket at negative 3 
and we should be going to positive infinity. Okay. So if I asked you for a number greater than or equal to negative 3, you would tell me, let's say, 0. So if I had a number line, here's my closed bracket. 0 is to the right of negative 3, so I draw my arrow to the right. So from here on out, we will write domain and range in interval notation. Okay. So it says, types a graph. Graph the points on the table and then answer the following questions. So notice they didn't give me the equation. They just gave me a set of table values. So let's go ahead and draw these in. So we have 0, negative 7. Two, five, three, eight, and then seven, zero. Okay, now oftentimes students will struggle with drawing absolute value versus um, quadratic. But remember with absolute value, it's created by two straight edges, okay? So could I draw a line from the top here to the bottom as a straight line? And hopefully you would say the answer is no. So that means that this is going to be U-shaped type graph. All right, so based off of that, let's answer some questions. So what type of graph does the table represent? Okay. Hopefully you would say quadratic. It's U-shaped, it's a parabola. Okay. What type of equation would represent the graph? So notice the different wordage there. It says, what type of equation? Okay. When it asks for that, it's asking for the parent function. So what is the parent function for a quadratic? y equals x squared. Okay. All right, so then it says identify the x-intercept. And it's kind of hard to see on mine because I didn't draw a very good parabola. But the x-intercepts would be at 1, 0, and 7, 0. Remember that the x-intercepts is where the graph crosses the x-axis, and the y value will always be 0, and you always need to write it as an ordered pair. Okay. Then identify the y-intercept, and actually there's two places you could find the y-intercept. One is by looking at the graph, or two is notice that it's already in the table. The x value is zero, so that has to be the y-intercept. So zero, negative seven. All right, without pushing up the screen, I'm going to talk about the next two questions. So it says, what is the lowest value on the graph, and what is the highest value on the graph? When we're talking about values, we are talking about the y values of the ordered pairs. Okay, so that would be a good active note to take. We're talking about the y values of the ordered pairs. So if I look at my graph, I want to find, for the lowest value, the lowest y value on the graph. Problem is, is that my arrows are pointing down which means it's going to negative infinity, which means I could never have a minimum value. Okay, there is not a y value that's going to be the lowest one, because you can always find a lower one since it goes to negative infinity. So then you have the highest value. So if we go back up to the graph, the highest value, is there a y value that our graph maxes out at? There is not another number above it. 
Well, there would be. And it would be this point right here, which is 4 comma 9. So what is that y value at that point? Hopefully you would say 9. And so the maximum value is 9. So once again, talking about values has to do with the y values. Okay. All right, let's go to the next. Okay. And once again, we're going to go ahead and plot all these points. So negative 8, 6. Negative 7, 4, negative 6, 2, negative 4, negative 2. Then we go back up, negative 3, 0, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 4, and then we have 1, 8. So once again, students struggle with knowing if they should make this a U-shape or a V-shape. But if we look at the graph, we can make straight edges connecting the points. So this is an example of absolute value. And hopefully you guys are drawing better lines than I am. Okay. All right, so what type of graph does the table represent? Well, we already said absolute value. What type of equation would represent the graph? So what is the parent graph for the function? Okay. So once again, when it asks for the equation of the graph, you are just writing the parent function. All right, identify the x-intercept. We can find 1 by looking at the table, because remember that the x-intercept, the y value is 0, so negative 3, 0. Okay, and then the other one in the graph, once again, my drawing is not that neat, but it crosses at negative 5, 0. Okay. And then the y-intercept would be at 0, 6. Okay, once again, yours hopefully is neater than mine, but hopefully you can see that we're going up by 2 and over 1 each time. So it crosses the x x the y x excuse me at 0 6 all right so what is the lowest value on the graph so we look on the graph and see if there's a y value that's smaller than any other value listed on the graph and hopefully you can see we stop here so the y value at that point is negative 2 Then what is the highest value on the graph? So if we go back to our graph, is there a y value that maxes out? Meaning, can you find a y value that no other value can be larger than? Well, the answer to that is no, due to the fact that these arrows are going up. So we go to positive infinity, which means we cannot have a maximum value. So the answer is none. Okay. All right, so what you're going to do now is you're going to get into your groups. Okay. You're going to go ahead and do the last example of the note. Okay. When you're done, you're going to bring it up to get it checked. And if it's right, then you guys can have the group work for the day. Okay. So what I need is just when you're done, one person collect everybody's sheets, everybody's notes, Okay, or in this case, the iPad. Bring it up. Have who's ever subbing for me. Thank you, by the way. Uh, check it, and then you guys can have the group work. When you're done with the group work, as usual, staple it, turn it in, and then you guys can have the rest of the time on the homework. Okay? If you have any questions, please email me. Otherwise, have a great rest of the period, and I will see you guys tomorrow.